So, just a kind of quick test video. Uh, still, still fiddling around with the FPGA set, and um, what I've um, learned so far is, or at least that's actually my feeling, my impression, that every time we enter the Ultimate 64 menu and it is telling something that the SID configuration has changed and we go into the SID configuration, then uh, it is doing something with the FPGA SID configuration. Because every time we jump into Config Guru, uh, I see a different configuration compared to what I have set just a minute ago or something like this. So my impression is that every time I set the FPGA set to work on different addresses, leave Config Guru and then uh, start something, then this configuration isn't there anymore. And my idea was that um, actually the FPGA set has two configuration places or well, save slots, whatsoever, A and B. And we can change them um, on the fly by using a switch connected to this GTAC connector. And uh, what I'm going to try right now is, um, as you can see, I have connected my oscilloscope here as well. I'm going to talk about this in a minute. Is that I'm configuring the configuration B of the FPGA set in a way that uh, it should work with the connectors or the grabbers connected to the expansion port. And then um, we switch back to A, do what we ever have to do in the ultimate menu. And then uh, as soon as we start a program, something like this, that's uh, using this additional addresses, then we switch to configuration B. And hopefully this is going to work. It's a little bit awful, but uh, let's see if this is going to do the trick. So let's quickly jump into our C64 menu. Is it changed? Yep, that's right. And uh, I just want to go to, uh, first thing I have to check whether I'm on B or not. This says on, let's go for off and go for off, okay. So this should be okay right now. Chase it, config guru. Go for full stereo, expert mode. Here we can see D420 and D500. That's something I haven't configured. And uh, that's coming back <laughs> over and over again. Let's go for DE00, that's exactly what we are looking for. And uh, now uh, output is dual, that's fine. Let's store this to configuration B, yes. Then uh, let's get out of this. And now I quickly have to change the FPGA set because I want to configure the other one as well. So, just need to find my tool because I have to use a an additional socket to raise the FPGA set above the uh, jumper, and uh, I need to remove this before we're going to place it on the FPGA set adapter. So I think the main intention is that. You can do a lot of configuration of the FPGA set with the help of the Ultimate 64 menu, which is indeed a pretty nice idea, but uh, maybe it's going a bit too far. And uh, it is changing the uh, uh, stereo configuration as well. And that's actually, uh, actually something we don't want to have, especially for our case here right now. It has changed. Yep, that's right. This looks indeed a bit uh, nervous. 
So we either have no real contact. Yep, oh, probably. Maybe it's my worn out <laughs> socket. <laughs> so let's hope that uh, we made it just to the point that we can store the configuration. Save config. Yes. Oh, it's not working. It sort of crashed. So let me check whether I have to. So oh, this looks actually fine to me. Let's remove the jumper just to be on the safe side. Oh, those, these sockets are really not good anymore. Next attempt. Once again, so it has changed. <laughs> Still, what's that? So maybe uh, we should it's so good configuration. None, none. Okay, got no FPGAs it detected. That's not good. That's fine. So why do we have no FPGAs it? So, all pins are fine. Nothing is bended. Socket looks good as well. Nothing to complain about this. Well, let's test it again. Ah, now there's no message. None. And it's not even flashing anymore. So <laughs> I just hope my FPGA it hasn't died yet. That would be very awful. Let's test the other socket. Flashing, that's fine. None, still none. So, well, I assume that uh, Configure isn't working either. It's pretty strange. No FPG is it found. Okay. So I remember that this is normal when we put this in socket two. Shouldn't be the case, but that's actually I 
it's flashing, it looks nice and happy. But there's no FPGA set. That's that's really not good. And no. Oh. So let me quickly check what's the issue here. So I have installed the FPGA set on my uh, reloaded MK2 board and uh, quickly just threw everything together. So really do not try this at home. This installation is really not safe at all. But uh, here the FPGA set is working quite fine. No issues. So uh, I have no idea actually what uh, the case is. And I have configured configuration A the way we have seen it in the um, ultimate environment, whatever you want to call this. And uh, I have configura uh, configured configuration B in a way that we are going to use DE00 as address. And when I'm going to use this uh, switch, we can see that um, Configuro reflects the current configuration of our FPGA set. So this is actually working fine. So, and uh, now let's try to bring this all together into the um, Ultimate 64 and see if we can have some progress there. So let's switch this off. Nope, oh, what happened? Full screen went black. So, I'm back again. <laughs> Looks like OBS is a bit confused. So, just have to remember to bring this back into this, its original configuration, but it's nothing we have to do right now. So my understanding is that both of those uh, FPGA sits are configured as we want to have it. Let's see, they are off, that's fine. Let's bring them onto the socket here. Uh, well, let's connect our I.O. lines. Power. Video. Oh, step by step, making progress. What happened? Really strange. So. So the ultimate is still alive. Sid has changed, that's right. FPGA it, FPGA it, everything's fine. So now let's go to the SID addressing, give this a different address here and the rest 
not really important. And now we need the USB stick I have used on the ultimate cartridge. And now let's go into a preset demos. And uh, I think this one was the one where we could configure the second and the third address. Yep. So, I never managed to save the settings. I have no idea what's going wrong. <laughs> Space to start. There we go. So, now we have to move to a view where we have all the audio inputs as well. Why they are missing here? Mm. So actually we just hear one, let's call it channel, and that's actually the base address at uh, D4 through 0. And it's just one FPGA that's running right now. It's not too loud, let me dim this for a while. And the reason why we do not hear the other voices is actually um, why I have added my oscilloscope view here on top. And as you can see, I have connected my um, oscilloscope lines to the very same pins like uh, the grabbers for the FPGA sets. And there is actually no activity. And this is quite um, common for the Ultimate 64 because Gideon told me that um, due to this uh, internal cartridge handling of the Ultimate 64, he usually uh, switches off the activities on the expansion port. And um, there's a sort of trick <laughs> to enable this and uh, oh. this is actually uh, most of the time it is working when I just go through the, the settings once and uh, no nope. this time it isn't working manual writes dynamic awesome. ah here we see here we see something So now we can see that there is some activity on the uh, external I.O. pins. So this looks quite fine. And uh, we still can't hear something because the Ultimate 60, uh, I'm sorry, the FPGA set is still searching for data on the wrong configuration. So let's see if this trick is going to work. We're going to switch to the other configuration. And we can hear something. I just <laughs> reached the end of the, the tune, so let's wait a little. Hmm. 
May I have to press space or so? Nope. <laughs> uh, I thought it is uh, some sort of looping or so, but uh, nope. So we may have to start it again. But just to be on the safe side, let's switch to configuration A. And then, well, let's start the demo again. Maybe I have mounted. I have to mount the disk. And uh, maybe then I'm able to store the settings. Let's see if this is going to work. Six config PRG. So there is a file. Okay. Uh, I can't remember which key I have to press for. Loading something. Oh. Okay. Okay, then let's set it again. What happened? Ah, no. Interestingly, we got some stereo sound. <laughs> Let's try it with uh, three. So there, yeah. has no floppy noise, nothing.
Okay, so this is actually working quite surprisingly and uh, a bit in a way I have expected it. So it looks like the configuration switch for the first FPGAs it isn't required because it was uh, running out of the box with uh, the addresses. But the second one was waiting for it that we switch to the other configuration. Um, I do not exactly whether I have set the first one to the E00 as well on configuration A, perhaps, but uh, anyway. But, well, the main thing is that we need to get the activity on the expansion port running, as we can see in our oscilloscope. And then, uh, well, it is possible to play a 4-sit tune. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't found one which could be configured to, for example, D400, D420, DF, EE, and DE, DE00. Oh, I'm sorry, DF00 and DE00. Uh, because this is what we can um, do here. And, um, well, there's actually, I, I'm just aware of one tune that's uh, basically using four sits and um, this is a uh, quad tune from the demo with the same name, or was it quad core? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but this one is running on um, D400, D F00, DF10, and DF20, something like this. So, and this is something we can't configure here on the Ultimate 64. Um, there would be a way to, well, at least not for the sockets. I think it's running with the Ultisits, that's possible, but um, probably not for, for the sockets. Uh, there could be a trick to use additional address lines from the expansion ports and kind of merge the uh, address lines into a new chip select signal, but uh, that's probably way over the <laughs> uh, benefit we may gain from it. So, well, yeah, that's actually my uh, quick recap of the uh, method uh, about how to get possibly for different FPGA addressings running on the Ultimate 64. So that's that's all for this. That's not really a, a, an episode of, of, I thought we already reached the whole length, but anyway. So thanks for watching. I'm looking forward to your comments and see you for the next topics. Bye-bye.